Uh, the order, please rise before the legislature. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. I welcome to the uh, Northwest Indiana Regional Planning Commission Executive Board meeting for Thursday, September 19, 2013. We apologize uh, for the 15 minute delay start. I uh, think you ran over a little bit and we'll make sure they can do the meeting on time. Um, report of the chair. Uh, there's a couple items here to discuss. Uh, as chairman, each chairman that comes through kind of has their uh, own way to operate meetings and move things forward. Uh, and there's a, a lot of leeway, gray area uh, discretion. Uh, currently, we're working with the, uh, the FMP to come up with a formal uh, policy uh, that actually spells that out a little bit more in detail, and we look forward to their work product being uh, bring forward. In the meantime, uh, as the chair, um, working with uh, Dave Hollenbach and our uh, director, Ty Warner, um, I've come up with a couple of rules that I'm going to uh, put in place until the actual FMP comes out and then the, the body itself, the full commissioners, if they choose so to adopt. Um, again, we're going to be looking for, this, this, this body is here about moving projects forward and making the region much more strong uh, through projects, uh, through transportation, planning, uh, trails, things of that nature that makes everybody in this region uh, stronger. Uh, so uh, media decorum is the first and foremost as we want to conduct business here in a timely fashion. Everybody who shows up at these meetings, whether you're a commission member of public or a representative of a specific agency, your time is valuable. And we want to make sure that your time is maximized so we can get you back to the areas where you can conduct your work uh, quickly and efficiently. Uh, also, in order to have a, a very functional meeting and uh, we don't lose the decor, Robert Rules and Orders is in play. We must be recognized by the floor before a discussion can take place. Anybody that would come out and just absolutely take the meeting over or discuss things, whether you're a commission member or public, uh, that will not be tolerated. And uh, we want to make sure that this meeting stays on point and on agenda. Uh, speaking of the agenda, uh, public comment uh, will be pertaining to the agenda items only. Public comment has an opportunity to get on the agenda by a couple different things. First of all, we request that you follow somewhat of a chain of command. If you're from a specific city or town, you have a town manager or a mayor. We, we, we respect that you go through those chains. You also have city council and town council members. You have a commissioner who represents your body of uh, where you live. You have an opportunity to go through them as well. You've got county officials who are on this body who oversee everything in the county. You have an opportunity to talk to them. Uh, under the chair report, I will ask if there's a commission member who would like to add something to the agenda, and the agenda item can be added uh, under the uh, other business slash commissioner's uh, opportunities or topics. At that time, it can be added. That will allow uh, something that's important that NERPSI is involved in. Okay, again, I, I use this body. This is the Northwest Indian Regional Planning Commission. Uh, we understand that everybody has their challenges in their own communities, but if it does not apply to a NERPSI uh, function, we have sympathy for you, but we have to conduct business and move in the region forward. Again, these are chairman's opportunities and chairman's rules. Uh, and once the FMP comes out with a much more standardized, uh, each chairman can, can comply with, with those. So it's my job to make sure this uh, body moves forward. Projects get put in, in the right place. Money is uh, being uh, allocated in the right areas. And we have experts and everybody that's here to make that happen. So those are the new decorum rules going forward through my leadership as the chair. Again, I, I, I recommend you uh, contacting the FMP if you have some other suggestions how rules or uh, meetings should be complied with, and I'd be more happy to uh, add those uh, to, to how I run my meetings. But that going forward, no, am, I, am I wrong with any of those uh, uh, requests? We're not. Okay. Um, again, you have the ability to be part of the process. We're not taking that away. If in fact, um, again, that's, that's the core of the meetings. Also, uh, I have been correspondent a, a few different times uh, from everybody counts. Uh, they are represented by legal counsel, is that correct? Correct. Uh, I, I would suggest that at this point, it's not that I don't want to respond to the request of everybody counts to me, but it's that you are represented by legal counsel. 
I, I defer that correspondence be, uh, be taking place attorney to attorney uh, at this point. So uh, I'm just letting everybody know if I do receive correspondence, those correspondence immediately get turned over to Mr. Hollenbach. And at that point, Mr. Hollenbach and through uh, Ty Warner will, will, will disseminate information appropriately that represents the commission. So I just want the commissioners know that it's not that I'm not responding, it's just we have representation in place on both sides and I respect the same of the uh, local rules. I don't think I'm correct with that as well. Correct. Okay. So that is my uh, that is my report uh, for the chair. So uh, moving forward, we'll begin with the approval of the minutes on August 29, 2013. What is the uh, executive board's uh, position on this? So moved. We have a motion to approve. We have a, sec we have a second. Any discussion? Corrections, deletions, additions to the minutes. Hearing not, all in favor with an aye. 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 Against the ayes have it. Thank you. We'll immediately move to the Finance Personnel Committee. Blair? We have uh, two budget amendments and then a procurement recommendation. The first budget amendment is for $5,000 to the communication and planning and budget line item. As a, by way of explanation, the, there needs to be an air quality conformity analysis to, conducted uh, in association with the Indiana Expressway review. Uh, NDOT has uh, contracted with Parsons Brinkerhoff to provide that consulting for the air quality conformity analysis. Uh, NERC needs to be able to do a review of that. We had an individual, Bill Brown, who would have had the opportunity to be able to look through that. We have worked to replace Bill Brown, who many folks are aware retired earlier. Uh, Scott Weber has come on as his replacement. He's doing a great job, but needs the ability to be able to come up to speed. So uh, we need to be able to work with a consultant to be able to verify the results of the uh, Parsons Brinkerhoff study. CMAP, which is a partner metropolitan planning organization out of Chicago, is going to review that information, but we also want to have an independent review of our own. So in order to uh, appropriate funds for doing that consulting here, I am moving to make the recommendation to transfer the funds of $5,000 for the communication planning line item to cover the cost for a consultant. That money will come from the salaries line item, which essentially would have come from the area that we would have paid for the brown services prior to his retirement. That's the form of the motion. That is my motion. Do we have a second from the executive board? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor with an aye? Aye. Yes. You guys have it. The second budget amendment I have is for an addition of $45,000 uh, FTA 5307 transit era money uh, to the furniture and equipment line item. This is uh, to, these are additional grant funds to the 2013 budget that need to be spent by the end of 2014 and uh, we will be able to use these for purchasing computers for the NERPC staff. Again, these have to be spent by, uh, essentially it has to be allocated by September 25th. So I, on behalf of the Finance and Personnel Committee, am making the motion to approve the uh, additional funds. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. We have a second by the executive board member. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Here we go. All in favor with aye. 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 Yes, the ayes have it. And I have two procurement recommendations, the first being for uh, nursing computer replacements. That then goes along with $45,000 that we just, we just allocated. And the second being for uh, route match technical support. This is uh, software for South Lake County Community Services, North Township, and Porter County Aging and Community Services. Uh, it, that is paid with Federal Transit Administration funds or AIR grants X017. Uh, the, Nervousy computer replacements is $45,000 and route match technical support is $52,365. Uh, both are now included in the budget. I move to uh, adopt these procurement recommendations. We have a motion to forward. We have a second. A second. We have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Yes. You guys have it. And the only other item that I have is just kind of an update that we are working on preparing the 2014 budget. There are a number of uh, numbers that we're still working through to be able to include in that planning process uh, that includes the lease pricing, uh, looking at some of our health care costs for next year. So there are a number of unknowns that are going into 
uh, the planning process. The plan is to be able to adopt that budget by in the, I think the December meeting, so we should have that as best as we can together by that time frame. But just to give you an update on where we are with the planning process for the 2014 budget. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, we'll move right on to Environmental Management Committee. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, within your packet, as from our last meeting in the consent agenda, however, I would like to point out that the uh, J.D. Marshall Preserve is a very unique preserve, uh, the first in Indiana. It commemorates the uh, location in the bottom of Lake Michigan, about 100 acres was set aside by the Department of Natural Resources. It was formally dedicated September 7th by the Natural Resources Commission, and on September 30th at 11 a.m. at Indiana Dunes State Park, they'll do an on-site dedication. And you're all invited. Is that a report? Thank you. Uh, Transportation Policy Committee. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the TPC met on Tuesday, September 10th. Uh, there are going to be three actions uh, here later on. Uh, the minutes are found starting on page 15. I uh, uh, had an interesting uh, presentation from the uh, Toll Road Concession Company. They are going to be replacing uh, several bridges at uh, uh, the one over the Borman Expressway, I-8094, uh, where you go uh, eastbound uh, onto the toll road, uh, and then uh, three other bridges at the uh, uh, interchange there uh, in Lake Station. Uh, it's not uh, part of NDOT, so we didn't need to include it in the in the stiff uh, because it's all concession money that's it's going to replace uh, the bridges. So they're going to start that later on this fall. Uh, so that toll road interchange connection uh, onto the Foreman is going to uh, be kind of messy here in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, we also heard an update on the Iliad Expressway process, um, which is outlined in the proposed schedule. Uh, Mitch, do you have any? Mitch left. Okay. <laughs> I guess Mitch doesn't have an update for us. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, as I said, we've got a couple of actions um, in the packet. Uh, resolution 13-14. Um, um, Transportation policy recommends adoption of 13-14, which is on page 19 uh, in support of Amtrak funding. Um, we approved this at the TPC and we would look for the executive board to take action, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, we have a motion uh, from the executive board member at resolution 13-14. You do. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Open discussion? Commission members? Hearing none, all in favor with aye? Aye. 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 I guess the ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The second action is uh, resolution 13-18, which is amendment one to the fiscal year 2014-17 uh, tip for transit projects, which is found uh, starting on page 22. Uh, Belinda, do you want to describe this amendment for the executive board? Sure. Uh, this amendment adds the uh, uh, transit project for here. I'm sorry. There you go. That's much better. Okay, one more time. Uh, this amendment adds the, tra the transit projects uh, funded with Section 5307 for most of it, and also supplemented by for NICDI, the State of Good Repair Funds, and our Section 5, uh, 5339 bus and bus facility funds. Uh, it's for fiscal years uh, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Um, the project selection process that was used to put this together is based on the 2040 plan and the priorities and the goals and objectives of that plan. Um, the uh, Transit Operators Roundtable uh, is the body that the applications go before. Um, they're the only group of people that are eligible for the projects that can apply for them are, are um, established public transit operators. Um, and they vet all of the applications and the process and come up with a list of, of uh, projects that is generally fiscally constrained as, as it's required to be. So it is before you. It basically covers their basic operating uh, needs, preventive maintenance, um, planning, bus uh, vehicle replacements. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions of 
Commission members of the report. John, does this come with recommendation from Yes, this is a positive recommendation from the CPC, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have uh, information from staff. We have a positive recommendation from uh, T TPC on resolution 1318. Is there an executive board member wants to adopt this moving forward with a motion? So moved. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. A second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor with an aye. 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 The, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The final action is Resolution 13-19, Amendment 2, on, starting on pages 45 for the fiscal year 2014-2017 TIP uh, for NDOT projects. We had to add in uh, some NDOT projects. Uh, Gary, do you want to describe the uh, amendment for the board members? Thank you, John. Um, NDOT has requested that some changes be made to the new TIP. The first section, uh, and, and there's like five or six parts to this uh, 10 page amendment. Uh, the first uh, grouping of projects uh, are those uh, construction projects that needed uh, preliminary engineering and right of way phases added. Uh, those were uh, incomplete in the prior tip and they were inadvertently left off um, of NDOT's original project list. So we are adding those back in. The second grouping of projects actually deletes projects from the TIP. These are projects or project phases that NDOT has uh, taken another look at and decided not to pursue um, during the, the immediate future. Um, they're adding three rail crossing safety projects. Uh, I believe uh, two of them are in Dyer uh, and one in St. John on the CSX Railroad. There are uh, some additional, uh, there's one additional project in, in St. John uh, that's being added as well. Uh, and finally, uh, there are some uh, uh, new bridge uh, projects uh, I'm looking at on pages 54 and 55 uh, and road rehab projects that are being added as well. Uh, and finally, there's a statewide bridge inspection project that NDOT is, is proposing be added to tips around the state, uh, and that will be for all bridges statewide. Any questions about Gary's report, Mr. Chairman? It's not even about the report or the quantity of, or the quality of the stuff inside the report. It's about the font. Um, I guess I'm getting older, but. You know, if we're supposed to make intelligent decisions on this has got to be six fonts or eight font, and I can't read it. I mean, I'm just, I think for future me, I, I, I need glasses and I have glasses in my office, and maybe I should start bringing them to Nerf if this is going to be the font that we're going to read, but this is pretty brutal. To it's practice. 11, it's 11 point, to be really? exact. And, and it's pretty I, small. I mean, it's better than last year where it was eight point. Okay, but I'm just saying if we're really supposed to make intelligent decisions, it's hard. Maybe I need to start dragging my glasses around. Yeah. Hey, I hit 60 this year, too, so I'm... <laughs> well, I'm not 60. <laughs> 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 when you said 62, I didn't like that. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying for future meetings, if we can think about the part, I'd appreciate it myself. <laughs> That's we will definitely link into that. Thank you. <laughs> That's probably consideration for the only commission members, but the public that wants to read the numbers as well. Thanks. Good point. This also comes with a positive recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, is there action taken on resolution 1319 uh, for uh, approval by executive board member? Can get a motion? So moved. Any second? Second. So, any discussion? You're not all in favor with an aye? Aye. aye. Against the ayes have it. And the last item, Mr. Chairman, is the next TPC is scheduled for Tuesday, October 8th at 9 a.m. Got that. Thank you. Uh, Legislative Committee, Tom McDermott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Legislative Committee had a second meeting in late August. Um, we talked about some federal issues. And with the federal issues, we've always split up Legislative Committee into federal and state issues. Um, and the federal issues, we mostly take our lead from Dave Schaefer and NARC, the National Association of Regional Councils. They pretty much set the agenda, and I know 
the executive board when they do their DC trip, they usually you know, push the federal legislation and, and the agenda based on what happened at our conference. So we talked about federal issues, but it seemed like we concentrated mostly on state issues. What we're trying to do now is come up with a poly policy position on a few key issues, and then we're gonna present it to the full commission for either a vote yes or a vote no. So that our goal is to be ready for January 1st uh, legislative session. Some of the proposals we talked about were the South Shore expansion itself, uh, do we support it? Do we oppose it? I mean, you know, are we going to take a position as a body? So we're going to come up with some language on a resolution that we plan to present to the full body to say you know, yes or no, and can we send it up to the legislators to say that we support this expansion or we don't support this expansion. Other issues that came up in regards to the South Shore was the NICD proposed changes to the board. I know we had some uh, we had a legislative committee summer study session here last week, and we talked about this in that step study session. Representative Mara Candelaria Reardon and uh, Representative Soliday carried a bill last year that talked about changing the composition of the NICD board. Uh, we have to decide as a body whether or not we're going to take a position in regards to the proposed changes. Um, the Ileana came up in the legislative committee, but we didn't really feel like we should take a position because it's already been approved by the state. So it's sort of after the fact. I mean, take, taking a position on the Ileana would have been appropriate when they were debating whether or not to go forward with the state law, but since they changed it, we decided that basically that's a decision of the board on funding that we have to make, but I don't think the legislative committee is going to have much input on that. Uh, the future of the RDA is something that's going to eventually come to all of us. Um, we're trying to draft language at the legislative committee to present to the full board because we're all going to be asked whether or not we go forward with another 10 years in the perpetuity uh, as far as whether or not the RDA is going to be reapproved. Um, there's been a lot of concern about that expressed around Lake and Porter County, so we decided that's an issue that we should jump into, and we're drafting language for a resolution as, as that goes. And public transportation comes up time and again. Obviously, when we talk about the South Shore expansion, that's public transportation, but I think a lot of what we're hearing is the, the state of busing, primarily in Lake County. And this being a three-county board, you know, it's, it's tough to, you know, when we come up with issues that only apply to one county, in this case, Lake County, it's hard to bring a resolution that concerns one small slice of our entire three county area to the full board and expect everybody to, you know, really. So basically we're debating on whether or not we're gonna come forward with legislation, out of the legislative committee with language on, in regards to busing in Lake County. It just seems like maybe that's an issue that should be debated more in Lake County and stay out of Herbsey uh, because this is a three county area, so. Anyway, uh, if you're interested in joining the Legislative Committee, we are open. Uh, in fact, we're very happy to announce Commissioner Nancy Adams is now a member of the Legislative Committee, and she was very happy about that. And if anybody else is interested in joining the Legislative Committee, please see the chair, Chairman Uriah after the meeting. Hopefully, he'll put you on there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Thank you for your report. Uh, Northwest Indiana Economic Development District, uh, Rosalind. Vice Chairman um, basically with the district, the Economic Development District, um, there's the uh, Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy Plan that was created, and we had a meeting with, uh, in fact, Commissioner Allen may have uh, already reported on this, but we had a meeting with EDA to close the loop on designating that district, and simply in the mechanics of, uh, of taking that ball forward to get the loop closed and having the district designated. Um, uh, the forum staff is largely taking up that and getting together with the EDA needs to complete that designation. <coughs> Basically, things are on track. Um, at, that st at that point, it will be trying to obtain funding for continued operations. They're trying to obtain an operation, <coughs> which is not certain, but this is where this is all leading to try to keep that, uh, keep that going forward with the grant from EDA. Thank you, Captain. Okay, well, we'll move on to in-depth. In all of us not able to attend today, but Jim Buchanan is here to represent NDOT and we'll come over to I, I would just update the board real quick that uh, we're continuing to work with Mitch and the staff here at NERPC on the Ileana uh, information that they need so that they'll be able to present you with uh, information, uh, I think in the October meeting is what we're shooting for. So uh, we're continuing to provide the staff the information they need to perform their analysis and that's pretty much all I have right now. Thank you. Okay, any other business? This is the opportunity now uh, as we move forward uh, to uh, future meetings, this would be the port, a part where uh, commission members can come forward with uh, specific items in their own backyards to bring to the full commission. Um, and so we can kind of get used to that, uh, that type of format moving forward. 
Uh, but other than that, uh, is there any other business the commission members need to bring forward uh, this morning to this body? Okay. Uh, we'll turn over to public comment. Again, public comment is pertaining to the agenda items that are on the agenda today. Anybody like to come forward and just uh, state your form and address for the record for items on the agenda for today? I don't have a great deal of respect for your policies that you announced today without notice. I'm looking for, um, it, there should be, uh, when some people get up and a lot of trouble to get here, if you're going to change the policies, it would have been courteous, but I'm sure not very expected of you to do that, to let people know in advance. You had business at your last meeting, and it should be an old business on this report. So when are we going to, those of us who were promised all kinds of reports and documents and recommendations, when are we going to get those documents and recommendations? And secondly, what you've done here is make a very clear announcement that despite all of the promises and all the rhetoric about moving forward and it's a new day and we want to expand our participation, we want input from the community, what you're now doing is attempting to make certain that that does not happen. I can assure you that your rules and your policies don't mean a great deal to the people whose lives are at stake and to whom you have lied. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else like to come forward? First of all, I have an article here from 20 years, 17 years ago about the transit system. And you know, I, I look at this, try to be open-minded and everything, nothing's changed. 1996, they had an article about knowing the guidelines and every commissioner should know that they should have a red tag of what's happening with the transportation plan and everything. It's still going on, 17 years. You can change a policy of public comment, but you can't change a policy so these things don't happen again. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, under public comment, can we have both of them identify their name and address? Typically that's No, not how, address. Not address. We won't just, do that. Just, just name. We just name? Just. Rudy Velasco. I'll wait for the microphone. Rudy Velasco. Thank you. Teresa Torres. Thank you. Any, anybody else? Um, Kelly Dudley. Um, last time we were here, there was a policy adopted. Mr. Hollenbeck said that he wanted it to be contingent on his review of a consent decree that he entered into many, many years ago with Everybody Counts, on which he was at the council leading up to the consent decree. He was the council throughout the entire lawsuit. He's been the council ever since then. He said he wasn't familiar with the consent decree and he needed time. We've never gotten any feedback on whether or not last time's uh, actions were ratified by review of council or not. And our attorney has written letters asking what, what is happening with that. And he hasn't even gotten the courtesy of a response. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Roy Dominguez, board member of Everybody Counts. Um, I think uh, Kelly's absolutely correct. Uh, we were told it would get some response or the review from uh, your legal counsel as to our concerns that we have raised. And Mr. Chairman, if you elect not to respond to my letters or letters from our agency, uh, that's okay. Uh, that's your prerogative. However, I think that we are entitled at least to some response and if you're not going to respond, maybe your legal counsel should respond. Our lawyer has only responded and written to your lawyer. So there's been no violation of any uh, legal counsel who represents us. He, Steve Service has never written you without going through Dave Conback. So let's just make that clear. Um, but, uh, you know, we're only asking for some response, for some information. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Isn't that what we're supposed to do as a body? Isn't that what we say when we go out? To the public and we say we're going to represent your interest you have a right to come forward and we want to hear from you and I know you all uh, mean to do that but it hasn't been that way and so if you think that it's getting a little bit more aggressive or whatever or do you think there's some frustration on our part that we don't have some notification I mean wouldn't you uh, why wouldn't they we want the folks that everybody counts as well after all Chairman, you said last time you don't want to segregate us you want to make sure that we're included 
And the whole thing is about public participation. Here recently, I'm told, our agency uh, didn't get the email that we're going to have the uh, meeting today. So they were told that they got the email. Then they said, no, uh, there was no email sent. We mailed it to you. He said, no, we haven't gotten that either. They said, well, you know what? We're not required to send you anything. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's progress, huh? For years, they've been getting it at their office. Email, as you know, it's so, so simple. But now they're told, well, no, you didn't get the email. No, we mailed it to you. Well, no, now we're not required to do that. Or our agency represents people who actually uh, have uh, some uh, uh, vision impairments and things of that nature, and we notify them and we advocate for them. And so we hope that you go back to the process of notifying everybody via email. Because after all, you say, it's public participation, we want you to be here, but now we're not going to send you any email. And if you do get here, well, these are all the rules, these are all the things. And, and that's okay, so it's hopefully that, uh, that uh, things might change and that things might improve in going forward because Teresa's right, I mean, that's what we've said. It's a new day, we're gonna move forward, we wanna do all these other things, but we've had no communications whatsoever. Uh, last time, I, I believe Mayor Copeland had submitted a report from our ad hoc committee. Uh, said we're gonna give it to the chairman for, for your review and then that that would be disseminated. Well, we've asked for that. Uh, there's nothing in the letter that I sent you that says anything other than can we have some information? Can we see the report? Can we talk about it? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? You said, Mr. Chairman, we're going to do this ad hoc committee so that we can address the concerns. But we do that. We don't know what report was submitted. We don't know what, what was sent. And when we ask for it, it's like, oh, here we go again. They're being uh, negative about it. There's nothing negative about it and certainly nothing personal. So I, I want to thank you for the opportunity to voice my concerns. Mr. Please let me respond to several of those questions you had there. Uh, first of all, uh, you did email me, and I used this form to publicly uh, acknowledge your correspondence because an email doesn't necessarily get out to everybody, but this public meeting does. So I, I did recognize that you did correspond with me, and I wanted to make sure my, my response was done in public so it was very transparent. So I, I did do that, and I used this body and this form to answer that question. So I, I respect that. If, Going forward, again, any correspondence between your organization and the you directly towards me, I, I ask for those directly to go to Mr. Hollenbeck. So I, I've done, I've answered your question in a public setting, which is a lot better than email to email. That's what I believe. Um, also, the the, uh, the committee report that was given to me is still a work product of, um, of uh, as a chairman with uh, legal representation. We're still vetting the information. Obviously, uh, the consent decree has been in place for several years. So please allow us at least 60, 60 days or so to go through the information. And once we're ready to present that going forward, we will. I mean, how long has the uh, consent decree been in place? Mr. Oh, five. Oh, five. So we're going on oh, eight, six. Oh, about eight, eight, seven, eight years. So I mean, that's, that's a long time. So at least allow some 60 some days for venting of that information to run in the same parallel course. That's all I do is ask for that time, okay? And once that report is ready to be disseminated among the commission members and make a public document out of it, everybody will have an opportunity to have that information. Why didn't you just answer the letter and say that? That would have been courteous. So, okay, anybody else would like to speak? Sir? Hi, my name is Jim Bartis. I'm a citizen. And through the years, I've attended meetings here. I don't always agree what happens, but I do want to thank you for your public service. Yeah, difficult job sometimes. Number two, thank you for those bike trails again. You do a great job with that. Great, great job. And thank you for the expressway and the roller improvements you've done through the years. The negative, I'm sorry, I still don't agree with the LEN expressway. I'm a big uh, proponent of the Gary Airport. I worked with Gary Chamber of Commerce years ago to promote it. And I don't think you should give your competitors an advantage. The people in, in are still trying to build that Piatone Airport, and I don't think we should give them a competitive advantage. So please take a stand on this. You said, I heard earlier Mayor McDermott says at the state level, I attended several meetings here, and no one took a stand against it. 
And one more, the railway system. Uh, years ago, I went to two nursing meetings, and we had the Westlake Corridor. And had a plan, you know, versus expanding the expressways. And I, at those meetings, I was told it's very expensive. I understand that. And now, here we are in 2013. Just an idea. How about if we had a railroad system, a railway system, or bus system that loops around our area? Why do we have to shoot things out to Lowell and out to Valpo to send people to Chicago? Why don't we take care of us? Why don't we have a, a railway system that goes around? Another idea may be very expensive. We throw the cars on there. You throw your car on there, you, you, you get on the rail, and you drop you off 20 miles later, reduces pollution, and you go to your work. Other than that, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I, I want to compliment the, uh, the last, uh, I want to compliment the, uh, the gentleman who just spoke about comment. And I wanted to point out to him in regards to the Ileana that we, I totally agree that it's a very important issue, sir. Uh, we just felt in the legislative committee that we shouldn't take a stand because there's no pending le legislation on it. However, Myself, speaking for myself, I take it very seriously. We have a vote in Nursey on that issue, and I want, I want you to know that we're listening, I'm listening. I know all the other commissioners know that this is a very important vote. So just because we're not taking a stand in the legislative committee doesn't mean that we're rubber, rubber stamping the other episode. And I think that your comments were very, very professional. Thank you. Hey Jackson, Gary, you guys say it's a new day, but it seems like it's going backwards to me. That little declaration this morning to me was nothing but a form of censorship. I'm going to write to your lawyer, we get no response. We drag our tired bodies out here to ask questions, to make comments, we get no response. Of course, we don't, you know, we don't want you to seem like we're rushing you. You've only ignored the consent decree for seven years. Take 60 more days, no problem. I am so ticked off with you guys right now. You just really, really don't understand. But it's supposed to be a new day. Just do me a favor. Before you bring out the guard dogs and the water holes, just let me know so I won't show up that meeting. Good morning, Commissioner. My name is Jim Nowacki. I'm with the City of Gary, and I wanted to comment on the uh, uh, on the report from the Legislative Committee. Uh, number one, I guess you'll be looking at uh, taking a position on whether or not the RDA will uh, receive uh, endorsement of this organization. Uh, as you all know, that uh, when it was a start about eight years ago, uh, the, the uh, two counties and three cities in Lake County uh, supported the organization with the. Uh, 17 and a half million. 10 million was kicked in from the sale of the toll road. Uh, uh, but that was only for 10 years, so that'll be gone. And, and now we're looking at whether or not uh, you want to, uh, whether or not the state will uh, support the RDA with that uh, additional 10 million from uh, state taxpayers. And uh, judging the RDA on the uh, work product, I, I would, uh, I would uh, certainly like to uh, have the uh, have the opportunity to question them um, aggressively uh, rather than just the fluff pieces that we've received over the years because I don't think we've gotten uh, uh, more than more than we put in to that RDA uh, and it's uh, it's also tied in with the RBA uh, which was also part of the legislative report as I understood it uh, from the uh, chairman uh, we're wondering whether or not NERPSI should weigh in on matters that the legislative chairman <coughs> considered uh, an issue that was a Lake County issue. It didn't appear to be a Lake County issue when the, when the RDA was investing uh, $13 million in the regional bus uh, authority, uh, all for naught. And now that that money's been wasted, uh, frittered away and lost, uh, and our our regional transportation system has uh, been uh, degraded uh, because of those efforts. 
Uh, we're looking at, uh, at uh, 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 <coughs> a bus service only in Lake County. I think that's, that'll be a big mistake. Uh, I think one of the important projects that I've, since I've been attending these meetings, is how important a regional bus authority, uh, regional bus transportation would be uh, for the, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, NERPC region. Uh, I can't believe that, that we'd be uh, turning our back on that uh, program at this point, so I'm going to urge the, uh, the, uh, the, the NERPC board to look carefully at uh, the future of the RDA and look critically at it, uh, not simply thinking that, uh, that, you know, that this was manna from heaven, it was not. It was uh, actually a, a money that could have been used uh, uh, in all other different uh, tax ways for, for, for other di different public projects too. Uh, and, uh, and then look carefully at the, uh, what, the, um, what the legislative committee is looking at uh, regarding the RBA. I think, uh, I think we have to maintain that a regional bus uh, program of some sort is uh, one of the important projects of, of NERPC, so uh, that, that's the end of my comments. Thank you. Mr. Chair, just, uh, in response to uh, the first half, I appreciate Mr. Nowacki's comments. I'm, <clears throat> I know Mr. Nowacki's from Gary, and I know he may not be comfortable saying that out loud, but he asked a question about the, uh, the RDA, whether or not Gary got more out of it than it put into it. And there's no doubt about the fact that Gary got more out of the RDA than it put into it. There's, I mean, at the end of 10 years, Hammond Gary, Chicago, Lake County government, and Porter County will have put $35 million into the RDA after 10 years, $3.5 million a year. I maintain between the Marquette Park improvements that the RDA has done in Gary and the Gary Airport that Gary got far more out of the RDA over a 10-year period than it put into it. There's no question about that. Quite frankly, I usually hear that comment coming from other areas, maybe from Porter County areas or from maybe South Lake County or for, from county government officials. Hey, what do I have to show after 10 years of the RDA? I've never heard anybody from Gary say that till today. And I just want to say, it's sort of a silly statement, Mr. Nowaki. <laughs> the hundreds of millions of dollars that have gone into the Gary Airport and uh, you know, tens of millions of dollars that went in improvements at the Marquette, Gary got way more out of the RDA than it put into it. So the question is, is the state going to maintain their $10 million annual commitment? That's the big issue. Because if the state, <clears throat> what the glue that bound the RDA together, you know, eight years ago when we put it together, was the $100 million commitment from major moves that the state put into the RDA. Now, if that $100 million commitment is renewed over another 10 year period, I think it's going to be a lot easier to keep the RDA and, you know, supporters of the RDA together. However, if that $100 million commitment leaves, that's where tough decisions need to be made in Northwest Indiana. And that's why we're tackling this through the legislative committee. And that's why we plan to bring a resolution forward for the nursing commissioners to decide whether or not we're going to take a position on this. Because without the state's commitment, it's going to be a lot tougher to sell the RDA for another 10 years for communities like Sherrillville or Crown Point or Lake County government or Porter County, where they're paying the tax to be part of this. That was part of the deal. Is we put money in, the state matches it, and we do these great projects. I've, I've been a fan of the RDA, I've been a supporter of the RDA, but I also realized that the next 10 years we're gonna have to convince the public and the officials that it's needed. So I wanted to correct Mr. Nowacki's statement there. And in regards to regional busing, um, it's my position that the RDA could fund regional busing. You know, the RDA could have been funded by the RDA, but the RDA chose not to fund it, which leaves it a Lake County issue. Does Lake County want to put up the money necessary to keep the RBA up and running? And quite frankly, there's not a lot of support for that. And, and is that an urgency issue or is that a Lake County government issue? The legislative committee decided this is not an urgency issue because this is a three county board. People in the Port County, no offense to Lake County, but people in the Port County don't much care about the RBA argument in Lake County. That's why we decided not to bring forward the RBA issue to this full board, because two-thirds of this board it doesn't affect. I think those are sound decisions made by the legislative committee. I apologize to Mr. Novacki that he doesn't agree with them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor McDermott, I, that, that's the reason why. I know we heard early on that the, the, the change in the rules and stuff like that moving forward. That's why we wanted to get more of the, the managers and the mayors, the town councils, the city councils involved in some of those decision-making. So if, if it's taken out of the cities or towns and brought to this body by the commissioner, then it does become a NERPC issue. And we wanted those agencies 
or those commissions or those uh, uh, home bases basically to be involved first to look at their resources to see if they can solve the problem locally first before it became a regional problem. That's the only reason we put these changes in place because it wasn't to uh, make the, uh, the, the inc not include people, we wanted more people to get involved because if you've got the support of your commissioner that's already come through the support of the town councils or the city councils and their elected officials, it makes a whole lot of easier because this body's about sharing the dollars about having a resource and matching grants, just like you talked about. The state's not gonna help us with the RDA. It's very difficult for the RDA to sus uh, be sustained. We come here as a community all the time, putting our 20% up against 80% from federal and state programs. That's, that's the way it works. And so your, your comments are, are, are right on point. And we want to be more inclusive. It is a new day. We have to, we have to do more or less. We've got to have combinations of a lot of resources. And we want more people to be involved and at the local level is where it starts. We all agree with that. I mean, most of the rural, I mean, your day-to-day, -day, daily life, quality of life starts at home. And you got to have the people in your own backyard support your initiatives and goals to move it forward. That was my point earlier. Really. And we're seeing, we're, we're seeing that now. Sorry, I know you have to go ahead and there's a comment back to Brian. This is a positive comment. The RDA, I testify as a citizen in Indianapolis, a Senate subcommittee meeting about a decade ago. So an average citizen, and that's all I am, can go there and you can testify. And I did. I, I, I uh, we were down in the basement of the state capitol building. Earlene Rogers guided me down there because I said I wanted to talk. I stood at a microphone and they said RDA and Northwest Indiana get some funding, and I was like, yes, yes, yes. Again, one more time, especially our airport. Thank you. I don't want to, we, we got to keep the meeting move forward. Is there any other comments or topics about anything that's already not been discussed? Only the positive comments. Okay, we'll close the public comment portion and bring it back to the commission. And uh, any announcements from commission members? We'll go right to the report of the executive director, Ty Warren. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the only really comment I want to make has to do with some scheduling. Um, as uh, Treasurer Milo had indicated, we are, uh, because of health care and the building situation and some other uncertainties regarding the budget, we are planning to have the budget come before the commission in December. So that will necessitate a full commission meeting. So we just want to uh, get that on your calendars now that we need to make that a full commission meeting for the approval of the budget on December 12th, which is the scheduled date there. Um, concurrently also on that date, as Jim Pinkerton from INDOT had indicated, we are in coordination with INDOT on doing the review for the Ileana Expressway, as was mentioned several times this morning. Um, we've had issues with needing to address air quality conformity, as was uh, discussed, and also with some environmental justice review and some other work on that. So consequently, um, so we also have on your radar screen, December 12th will also be the anticipated date that the Alien Expressway will come before the uh, commission. Um, that's when that amendment is planned to go forward. Uh, we brought to you for reconsideration. So December 12th is important to get on your calendars to make that a full commission so that we can approve the budget on that date. Okay, there's no other business that's coming from the university this morning. Well, I, I would like to comment. There were a couple comments made on the Ileana and the Westlake Corridor. The town of Cedar Lake does support the Ileana Expressway. That is my town council's decision that they have directed me to come to these meetings and support that. And also, in the past, we have supported the Westlake Corridor which would take uh, rail transportation down to Cedar Lake and Lowell. We have a lot of people that live in our community and there are great paying jobs in Chicago that they drive to the stations in Illinois and then take the train downtown. <coughs> Any other comments? Uh, that's a question, uh, clarification. The October commission meeting on the third Thursday at 9 a.m. <coughs> board meetings, board it's just a point for clarification. And the November one sometimes bumps into Thanksgiving. Um, is there any problem with where are that 
third and Thursdays for the next two months at 9 a.m. on Wednesdays. Good question. Uh, they are scheduled currently for that. Um, the October meeting had been slated for a full commission meeting. Um, it doesn't, I don't think, with the budget not being on there, I don't think it has to be a full commission meeting. We do have to have four full commission meetings per year. I'm not certain, actually, as I'm thinking off the top of my head in response to your question, whether the December meeting will mean that we have met that. So, one per quarter. One per quarter. So I would I assume at this point we would keep the October meeting a full commission meeting and perhaps at that we can discuss the November date. How does that sound? They, but they do occur on the third Thursday at 9 a.m. Yeah. November's November has a okay. that's what just got this word in my ear. There's no November meeting. So, so October and December. Those are should be full full commission, full commission meetings about those those dates. Any other business? Motion to adjourn? So moved. We have a second? Second. All favor of the night? Aye. Aye. Anyone want to stay?